Hey everyone, this is Nick and the Pine64 has just announced the PinePhone Pro. And while I really love my PinePhone and use it and play it around with every single Linux mobile desktop I can find, I always felt that it was held back by the underperforming hardware that it has. But it seems that the Pine64 has decided to offer a more premium device this time around. So let's see what it can do. Now this video isn't sponsored, but if you want to help support the channel, you can become a patron or a YouTube member. You will get access to a weekly patron cast in which I discuss Linux, open source and privacy news, as well as how I run the channel and some more personal stuff. And you also get the choice to vote on a few topics that I will cover each month, so you can help guide where the channel is going. Now you can watch all my videos on Odyssey if you don't really like YouTube, and you can also follow me on Twitter or Mastodon to get all my rants, tweets, toots and whatever else I post there. Okay, so what is the PinePhone Pro? It sports a rock chip system on a chip with six cores running at 1.5 GHz paired with 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM and 128 GB of internal eMMC storage. That system on a chip seems to be a variant of the RK3399, fine-tuned to have as good thermals as possible and better battery life. They also managed to enable suspend state so your phone will be able to receive calls and messages without using too much battery life even on standby. Now compare this to the regular Pine phone, which only sported a quad-core all-winner SoC running at 1.152 GHz with up to 3 GB LPDDR3 RAM, although my model only had 2 gigs. Now it should be a major improvement and have performance levels comparable to a current mid-range Android smartphone. Now as a matter of fact, the Pine64 says that the Pine Phone Pro should only be 20% slower than a Pine Book Pro, which is a very capable ARM laptop. So we can expect our Linux desktops on mobile to be pretty zippy on this thing. The cameras have also been vastly improved with a 13 megapixel main shooter in the back and a 5 megapixel front facing camera. Now, the regular Pine phone had a 5 megapixel main camera and a 2 megapixel front facing one. So there should be a very visible upgrade in terms of image quality. Now megapixels aren't everything, but you still need to have a healthy amount of them in order to pretend to take a decent picture. The body of the phone seems very close to the original, to the point that the Pro supports all accessories made for the baseline Pine phone, including back attachments, the keyboard and the wireless charging case. The only things that won't fit are the covers. You still get the same hardware kill switches under the case to disable the mic, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, headphone jack and the modem. The display uses a 1440x720p resolution, which is the same as in the baseline Pine phone and the same display size as well. But it's an IPS display and it's covered in Gorilla Glass 4 with raised bezels to make sure that the phone doesn't scratch when you lay it flat on the surface or when it falls down. Now it does make the chassis 2mm thicker though. The backplate has also been modified to be less prone to fingerprints which is a good thing as the original one could quickly turn into a nightmare for neat freaks like me. Now I can't be the only one that wipes their phones on their shirts or their pants every time they use them, right? The battery is the same as the Pine phone, a Samsung G7 compatible one at 3000 mAh. Now this might be an issue as the new SoC is more powerful and is likely to draw more power. So let's hope that they worked on optimizations with the manufacturer to make sure that battery life stays decent. Now the Pine phone Pro is available for pre-order today at $399 and it should be arriving at early 2022 if chip and component shortages don't intensify until then. Now who is that thing for? Because new hardware isn't a silver bullet. The software side of things on Linux phones is still not close to being daily driver material for me and probably for a lot of people out there. So yeah, the PinePhone Pro still targets developers and super early adopters that just want a phone that can turn into a Linux desktop when they want to, but don't really rely on application support. While Plasma Mobile, Fosh and Ubuntu Touch development efforts have been bolstered by the release of the original Pine phone, they're still not complete replacements for Android or iOS just yet. And while your experience of these systems on the Pine phone Pro will definitely be faster than on the Pine phone or the Librem 5, it still won't magically make applications appear. Now this thing should be more than capable to run Android apps if we could ever land on a reliable solution for this. Now if you'd like to see how these mobile Linux desktops run, I have a series of videos about them on the channel. I'll link them in the card up top and the description of the video. So if what you were looking for is basically a Pine phone but with nicer hardware, better cameras and a faster SoC, then this thing is definitely for you. If you were looking for a flagship device that runs Linux and that can completely replace iOS or Android, this isn't it. 
Now the original PinePhone will still be sold alongside the new PinePhone Pro, which means that it's time to talk a little bit about the strategy here. Basically, the Pine64 could not release the PinePhone Pro first. It was not doable. The price point would have made developers more reluctant to buy it and try to develop for it. And less Linux enthusiasts will also have opted to buy it just to play around because like it's, it's $400, it's a lot of cash. Now, if they had opened with the PinePhone Pro, it would probably have bombed hard and basically it would have nipped in the bud any chance of getting these Linux desktops off the ground. Now with the PinePhone, what they wanted to do is provide a baseline device that is affordable and that let people basically burn money on to experiment, to play around or to help make a Linux powered future for phones a reality. But now that the PinePhone is well established, there is probably a big portion of the user base that bumps into its limitations. The SoC is pretty underpowered, it lacks RAM and the cameras are pretty bad. And these people might be able to daily drive any Linux mobile desktop, but the PinePhone might be holding them back, and the PinePhone Pro is definitely what can sort that situation out. So basically they sidestep the failings of the Ubuntu Edge phone. This thing failed because it was too expensive for an unproven concept. But now that the regular PinePhone has proven that Linux phones aren't just vaporware, then basically it's a lot easier to justify spending 400 euros for a device like that if you're a Linux enthusiast. I mean, I paid far more than this for a Jink pad, and that thing is not ready for prime time. Wait until the end of the month for the review. So, will I buy a PinePhone Pro? Probably not yet. I'm super enthusiastic about it, and I think it solves a big problem of the original PinePhone, which is, it was underpowered, you, you got what you paid for. But I still need my applications, my banking app, my YouTube app, my YouTube studio app, my Twitter app, and my messaging apps to talk with my friends. I can do all of that on my PinePhone, and it's just not a daily driver to me. And the PinePhone Pro would not solve these issues either. But it's still a super interesting device that I really, really will follow with a lot of interest. It's, it's basically starting to make my reality of having a good looking, powerful device running Linux as a daily driver. And once the software side of things is ready, I will definitely splurge on one. So this video was made possible by Slimbook, and you probably all know about it by now, but it's a Valencia-based company in Spain, which makes Linux laptops and desktops with all form factors, all keyboard layouts, all price points, all performance points. I only use their desktop and their laptops nowadays, and they are really good. So if you need a new device running Linux out of the box, just check the link in the description below. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like and subscribe. And if you didn't, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.